what some of the views I had then and did I want to talk about it now? And somebody say, but give it a bit more context, why did I say that? And how do I feel about that now? And so we did. And uh, I'll read a little bit of it out for you now. Um, I'll try and indicate which bits are the original article and which bits were talking about it a couple of months ago. Okay, we'll start off the first, this is from the article. Everyone seems to be cynically enthused about the march. Viva la revolution and I feel fucking awful. I've gone beyond the states that can be cured or at least temporarily numbed with sulfate. Anything speedy or energizing I take now will just transform into paranoia. <laughs> and that I don't need, not today. Well, what I was trying to say <laughs> was uh, cynical enthusiasm was the punk attitude, or at least the London punk attitude that I knew. Everyone was cynically enthused, meaning that we were into things deeply but still maintained a sneer. Like at the pistol screen at the green gig, screen at the, on the green gig, when Johnny walked down the stage, people weren't saying, there's Johnny, great. They were saying, there's fucking Johnny in his pop star rags. <laughs> the inference was he's going to let us down in the end. <laughs> Cynical enthusiasm meant reveling in the scene while harboring the belief that it was bound to go wrong. It wasn't a sense of cool. People used to say that, say that about the puppy collective. Oh, we saw you at such and such a gig and you were so cool, but we couldn't talk to you. But we were never cool. We were just either cynical or bickering with each other. <laughs> the other punk attitude, at least by the time of writing this piece, was that cynical apathy, rather than cynical enthusiasm. There was a thin line between the two, and it was difficult sometimes to drag people out to gigs or events such as this vicious march. Of course, drug comedowns played the part in all this, and such psychic states also produced the paranoia I mentioned, as that was a punk feeling if ever there was one. We were moving targets, and within our, within our rights to feel paranoid. Again, after a while, you would crave that paranoia. It became a drug or a high in itself, a spark. It was good to be on the edge. <coughs> Back to the article. Last night, I went to see the swell maps in Pink Military. Not because I really wanted to go or see either, but I feel it's important to get out to gigs and to keep in touch. It was sold out when we got there, but after a hassle, we got in because the swell map knew the name Tony D. What well, I was trying to say, <laughs> the, the Swell Maps had a song called Ripped and Torn, and that's why the guitarist, the late Nicky Sudden, let us in. I wrote about the Swell Maps gig in this article because I wanted to show people that we didn't just go to see Sid Vicious type bands. I wanted people to think, ah, this is Kill Your Pet Puppy, this is punk. And the fact that this gig had sold out showed just how far punk had spread. Some people were trying to call it post-punk, but that was just a media invention. I never understood the term. Not now, not then, not in the future. Post-punk was a media phrase used by people who didn't go to gigs. <laughs> a, 